God, hear my voice. Oh, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness, for this we revere you. My soul is waiting for the Lord, I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak in Israel on the Lord, because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. In life Susie cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come blessed of my Father. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death, confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray asking God to gather Susie to himself. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant Susie, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her into your kingdom of light and peace and count her among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And you're all very welcome here this afternoon and, or this morning. And um, please, if you will, if you have a seat, be seated. If not, sure, I'll ask you to endure. And just before we start, the hall below here is open. And we'll have a cup of tea for everybody down there afterwards. And there are toilets down there. If anybody wants to use the toilets, please, that's where to go. I'll ask now, we're going to bring up symbols of Susie's life. And I'll ask, um, is it, who's going to introduce them? Morris is going to introduce them. Take your time. First symbol we have today is a set of rosary beads. Um, Mammy absolutely loved to pray, and coming to Trumco was a very big part of that. So the rosary beads are a symbol of Mammy's um, belief in, in God. The second one is um, a photograph of Mammy's two golden boys, uh, Patrick and Paul, <laughs> playing football for Corner Fane. Um, they won this cup, and um, I'm delighted she got to see it because I don't think they've had another win since. <laughs> Um, the next one is carried by Sarah. She is uh, showing a family photograph of all of us with, with Mam. And uh, that's one thing Mam just loved, the big family. She's from a big family, and that's another symbol of the family meant so much. <laughs> the next we have a set of dancing shoes. Uh, Mam was a great one to dance. If there was as much as a sound of music, she'd be on the floor. And she always maintained, if you said you couldn't dance, she said if you have power in your legs, you can dance. So that's the symbol of that. Um, next we have a lovely cake of soda bread, it, uh, handmade by Annie. Um, it's a real staple uh, part of our diet growing up and uh, Mammy would want to be pretty good at bacon because it was three or four a day just to keep the people happy. Um, and that's a, a very important part of, of, of our home life. And we have a little beautiful May coming up. She was a real treat. Um, she has a, a lovely teddy showing the love that the grandchildren and all her great-grandchildren had for their nanny, and that's the symbol we have there. Thank you. Just when I am here, folks, uh, before we went abroad, I'd just like to take an opportunity to thank a few people. Um, as you can understand, today is a very difficult day for us. Losing mam is never easy. And in case of Auntie Rosie and Auntie Kathleen losing the sister also, it's very difficult indeed. But um, the time has come. Um, Mammy, as you know, uh, 
suffered from dementia, and dementia has a habit of sneaking up behind you, stealing the person you love, their, their body, and then their mind, and uh, you're left with a person who has to be cared for. And um, we were very fortunate when it came to that, in some respects, that Mammy's new home from home would be um, the primary care unit in Virginia. Um, from Mammy entered there, she was minded so well. The care and attention from the, the management and staff was just fantastic. In particular, the, the care up on level one from the, the nurses and the carers, they just absolutely were fantastic. As time went on, you've seen it wasn't just you know, a nursing home or a care home. It was like a family member being brought into the house and being cared for. And when you see that going on, you realize that people who do that job, are, they are just fantastic to be able to, to do it and cope with it and you know, mind somebody else's loved one so well. So for that reason, like even when she was um, leaving the other day, they give her a fantastic send off and it would break your heart just to see the care that they give. So for that reason, um, you know, we are indebted to them for that, and um, we're internally grateful, to be honest, uh, for that. Um, we'd also like to thank Father Casey and Father John and Father Tom for the Mass today. I know we haven't started, but Father Casey is a very big part of Mammy's life as well. Coming to Drum Corps here for the last 50-odd years, her and Daddy, um, you know, they love coming to Drum Corps. It's a lovely place to come and pray, and Father Casey played a very big part in that, so we're very grateful to Father Casey. Um, just John McMahon and Philip, uh, we'd like to thank them sincerely. They've put in a massive effort over the last lot of days, and uh, they make this job look so easy. I mean, they're just, they're no fuss, no problem attitude is incredible, and everything is done to a T, and the only person they care about is your loved one, Mammy, in this case, um, and they are just fantastic at the job. So we really do appreciate them. Um, also, we have beautiful singers here today. Breed and Evelyn um, are just beautiful singers, and you'll see that as we go on. Fabulous. And uh, also, um, uh, we have Lee, um, Nanny's, Mammy's uh, grandson. He's going to sing a little song later on that he's penned himself. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, there's just a few other people, um, people like um, Eddie Flood from Flood's Taxis in Cavan. There came a time when Mammy wasn't able to be mobile anymore and suddenly you're at a situation where you have to decide how are we going to be able to get Mammy around or get her in and out and uh, Eddie Flood from Flood's Taxis came along and he uh, volunteered a uh, you know, um, wheelchair accessible vehicle. And that was a game changer in terms of bringing Mammy out, having her at events, weddings, some of her nephews got married, and um, you know, few, even first communions, confirmations, whatever it was, suddenly we had access to that. We could bring her out. She was still part of the family, part of the scene, and uh, we're internally grateful for that. And also even our own brother-in-law, Michal, who had the necessary licenses and you know, experience and fairness to drive that vehicle. Um, we really appreciate that as well. Um, also, our own sister-in-law, Melda, um, if anybody's looking for a fantastic hairdresser, she's your lady. Um, she was always on hand. Mammy loved getting the hair done and looking smart, and Melda stepped up regularly, to be fair, and groomed her up, and when you'd show herself in the mirror, she was so happy with herself. Even though she wasn't well, she just she was super happy. So that, that's very important. It may seem like a small thing to Imelda who can do it so easily, but it's a massive thing when you're that person who needs the help. So we really do appreciate that. And um, we also want to thank everybody who's come here today. You know, you just have been fantastic. Last night in, in John and Philip's uh, funeral home, the crowds were just incredible. And, uh, you know, it's a pure sign of the love and, and care that is given. And we really do, as a family, I think we never forget it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, so that's really important that people, you know, know that we, we are so happy with that. Uh, also, um, just our own brothers and sisters-in-laws, partners and all that. Like, it's not just people think we're a big family on our own, but it's, it's, it's the whole connections. It's all the brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, partners have been there for us through this whole time. And also, like, 
they are a big part, obviously, of our family. So we want to thank them. And um, I just finish off with um, my, our own sisters, like Margaret, Sharon, Suzanne, and Kathleen. I mean, people just see them, you know, going up and down. But they have been tirelessly making sure that Mammy was sorted in every possible way. You know, they, from bringing her out for weekends, walks up to the shop. Every week we organised um, visits and all this. And everything was done. Mammy should be, Mammy would be very proud of them. And to be fair, um, us lads probably would have struggled with everything that had to be done if it wasn't for the girls. And they should be very proud of them. We're very proud of them. And um, I know Mammy would be very proud of them. So um, I sincerely hope I haven't left anybody out. If I have, I'm sorry. But um, I think we better let Father Casey uh, get on to us and thank you. Thank you, Morris. And thank you, everybody. And we gather in now around the story of Susie Brady and we'll ask how we can look through that story and through the person of Susie into the depths of the mystery of life so with God we stand now and we start our mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen the Lord be with you we gather understanding that life is dangerous and difficult we all make mistakes we all fail we all have regrets and reverses in life. Let us pause asking God to have mercy on all and to rescue us and save us, we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, and I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done, what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Christ, of mercy. Christ of mercy. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Let us pray. And Father, we thank and praise you for this day. Thank you especially for Susie, whom we remember so fondly for every moment of her life all that she did, all that she was, and Lord, all that she hoped to be. We give her into your hands now, into your loving care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll have the readings from the Mass. <laughs> First reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting, a time for building, a time for tearing down, a time for sorrow, a time for joy, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing, a time for finding, a time for losing, a time for saving, a time for throwing away, a time for mending, a time for tearing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for conflict, a time for peace. What does a man gain from the efforts that he makes? I contemplate the task that God gives mankind to labour at. All that he does is apt for its time, but true, he has permitted man to consider time. In its wholeness, man cannot comprehend the work of God from beginning to end. The word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. This is what we have heard from him and the message we are announcing to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. If we say that we are in union with God while we are living in the darkness, we are lying because we are not living the truth. But if we live our lives in the light as he is in the light, we are in union with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from all sin. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel acclamation. <coughs> Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. Come, you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak, and this is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. And happy are those who are persecuted in the cause of right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. And this is the gospel of the Lord. This is the famous photograph it was carried up at the beginning. It hung on the wall down there in the house in Derry Negan. And later on it hung on the wall of the nursing home in Virginia. It's simply a marvellous photograph. I admired it from the first day I saw it. John James and Susie and the whole family gathered in splendor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boys. And one, two, three, four girls. Just wonderful. I don't suppose we'll see the like of this again in Ireland. It's something to celebrate. Morris was talking there and spoke nicely about Susie and particularly the last part of her life when she was in Virginia. 
and how well she was cared for and how the girls particularly were so attentive and all the fellas coming up and all the people that cared for her. But that was part of Susie's life, only part of it. I'd like to stretch your mind back and back and back further. So much more in Susie's life than the end. I'd hate to think that the end of her life was left to define her. That wouldn't be fair to Susie or to John James or to the family. There was so much more to Susie than that. I was listening to John there reading from the Matthew's Gospel. And we have, it, we have that passage very often at, at, at funerals. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the gentle. Blessed are the happy are those who mourn. It's a very strange sort of teaching of Jesus. I'd like to, you to hold it in your heart. And hold in heart the story and the person of Susie Brady. All of it. And wrap them together. Ponder on the story of God present with us as we're asked to believe in all the scriptures and especially in Jesus and see what we can come out with, how it can impact on our day to day and tell us something about how we live and what we're doing. I was watching the horse racing yesterday from Cheltenham. I'm not a punter, but I love to watch the horses run. They're beautiful animals. They're athletic. They love running. They're up for it. They're bred for it. The jockeys are all in going for it. And while one wins... A whole lot of the others take part. Not every horse can be a winner. But they're all so admirable in taking part. I was thinking about that. And thinking about how if, only we, if all we ever had was winners, we wouldn't have much fun at all. And part of the difficulty we have in life today is that it underlines the winners. And it tends to leave those who are only taking part or can't win to one side, as if second best was nowhere. Watching football then, I arrived in the other day with a cap in my head with a badge from Manchester United, and everybody thought I was a fan of Manchester United. I like to watch football, played well, any kind of football. But one of the things that struck me, and always does, is that there's a difference between winning a match and winning a tournament or a championship. And it's that difference I want you to hold in your heart today and try and see how much that is echoed across all that we do. It's the same as winning a battle. That's different from winning a war. And a lot of people don't understand the difference. There's a terrible business going on in Gaza at the moment. The Israelis are pumping the life out of everything and everybody that lives there. And without a doubt, they're winning the battle. They have more armor, more bombs, more everything. But without a doubt, they're losing the war. Because the chances of Israel and its present version surviving, the awfulness of this gets slimmer and slimmer by the day. Palestinians are losing their people. You can win the war, you can win the battle. 
and lose the war. We had the celebrations here for the founding of the state not too long ago. I was very conscious there of what happened in the north of Ireland when um, when James Craig and the Unionists decided they wanted to remain part of the United Kingdom. And they stuck their heels in the ground and they won that battle. But a hundred years later, it's becoming patently obvious they lost the war. Watching Michelle O'Neill and company, <coughs> and the way they're carrying themselves, it's a different story now. You can win the battle, and you can lose the war. And it's a wise person knows the difference between the two. I don't think the Israelis know it. I'm not so sure if lots of other people know it. But I'd like you to see that in some way, Susie Brady understood that. She lived in a long lane, a long, narrow lane that sometimes is flooded. She lived at the back of the hill, and lots of people would like to think that you're, if you live at the back of the hill in a long lane, sure, you know nothing. Hmm. There's a sign up at the end of the lane pointing for Flynn's Pass. And then just in case anybody didn't read that language, there's a little sign in French saying cul-de-sac. And you know, it's a bit of a joke that somebody down there would have anything to teach the smart people. I was watching Susie. I've known her and really admired her and liked her so much as long as I've known her. I went up to see her in Virginia there recently, on Monday. And she had her eyes open and she knew I was there and she was happy to see me there, which pleased me. I went up on Tuesday and she was gone down a lot. And she was struggling. Her face was strained. She was, her eyes were closed. Every breath she drew was a struggle. I sat there talking to the girls, Margaret and Sharon, and then Susie, Suzanne came in. And I thought, Susie is fighting the fight of her life. It's the great battle of her life. She's struggling to stay alive. And she was really doing as she had done all her life, putting everything into it, trying hard. And she was losing. She was all the time, with every breath, more and more the, the lungs and the heart were ready to give up. She was losing the fight. And that was hard. I anointed her there and prayed with her and mostly I just watched her and I admired her as I did when I was eating homemade bread down below in the house and, and jam. And then she died, she passed away then before I could get up again and she was brought home, her remains were brought home. And I stood looking at Susie laid out in her coffin, and she looked wonderful. She was back to Susie. Her face was composed. Hair was done. She had a lovely outfit on her. And there was a sense of victory in her. I thought to myself, Susie may have lost the battle, but Susie has won the war. You don't arrive at that place where you're victorious without something wonderful 
being present inside me. And I was able to witness to that, was glad of that. And I promised myself I'd stand up and I'd proclaim it here. That through his life, with John James and the family, was a wonderful life. There was, there was value in it. There was principles that shaped it. There was home and love and family. And there was God in the middle of all of that. We can't see God. We can't touch God. We can't even know God right. And if God was walking the roads, how would God find his way in to a house at the back of the hill? The grand people think God should be in a big place, in a church or in a cathedral, with big people like priests and doctors and nuns and bishops. How would God find his way in to a man and a woman and a family? And yet it's impossible to understand how John James and, Liv and Susie lived and the home they built, the family they reared, and the life and the times they had, able to come out and share with the neighbours, able to be here, able to be at everything that happened in the community centre down here, without the presence of the living God. That's the way God is present with us, in the ordinary, bog-standard, humdrum, domestic reality of life. If we think God is standing on a high mountain and speaking a foreign language and saying big things to us, we don't understand God at all. But if we live and bake bread and help each other along and go to visit your family and your sister, as Susie did, and then have a time to care for the neighbour and the friend and to leave a leave a present of a half a loaf of baked bread and a pot of jam hanging on my door over there if you think of that even and something of the power of God has to be in you and I'd like you to see how wonderful that was and maybe the best way you can see it is to see that when it's absent when God isn't there in the ordinary knitting of life, what happens? It unravels. The place falls down. We don't know whether we're up or down, left or right, going forward or going back. It's as if we're people in darkness. And we grab at it trying to put it away. But you can't catch darkness. You can't put it away like that. You have to have a light inside in you. And around you and there. To know what you should be doing. And can be doing. And to avoid the hazards of life. And something inside in Susie Brady rings true about that. We're all gathered here to support the family, to pay our respects to Susie, to we'll go over now and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, because if Susie were alive, that's where she'd be, making it afterwards for everybody. She'd insist on it. But if we don't learn something, if we don't draw something of our life back into ourselves, if we don't see what made her so special. Then we'll have lost something great. We've come here to celebrate Susie's life, but also to celebrate her going to God. The great moment of encounter between Susie and her maker. 
And what we're asked to see is that truth is going not to a stranger, but to somebody she knew all her life, somebody she shared with in her home and in her family, somebody who was so familiar she just took it for granted. There you are, nothing special. <coughs> day in, day out, this is what we are, this is the way we live. Somebody so honourable that he came and put his knees under the table and dined with Susie all through her life. She's going there, home, even though we understand she's leaving home. And she's going to John James, we pray, and her sisters and her family and the people she knows and loves, neighbours, whom she lived with, and whom she shared the wonder and mystery of God along with. So I'd like you just to watch her. We'll join in the celebration. And I'd like you too to understand as you can live at the back of the hill, live in a long lane. <clears throat> that doesn't mean to say you're apart from God or from the riches of life or anything like that. You can have and celebrate and, and be just as Susie was and be at the centre of the story. And may God bless us all one day to achieve the same eternal glory as we are sending Susie to now. Please stand. Join me. And those who are doing the prayers of the faithful, if you'll please come forward. Pray for our family, neighbours and friends who have helped us during this difficult time. Lord, hear us. We pray for Susie who leaves us in death, that God will bring her safely home and share with her the joys of the kingdom of light, happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who looked after Granny in her illness, particularly the staff in the Virginia Primary Care Nursing Home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who mourn Susie. May they be assured of Christ's closeness to them in their sorrow and find strength and comfort in their faith in Jesus, our risen Saviour. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember the departed members of our family and friends. We remember especially Susie's beloved husband, John James, her parents, John and Mary Jane, and all our deceased brothers and sisters. Miss Susie, be reunited with them in God's kingdom. The Lord hear us. Lord, we wish to hear. And we pray all our prayers now, joining them with the prayers of good people everywhere. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, these and all our prayers we place before you now through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and those who are bringing up the gifts of the Mass, please go to the back.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Father, we give you gifts of bread and wine. We give you the stuff of this day. We give you especially Susie. Everything about her, every moment of her life, all that she was, and Lord, all that you knew her to be. And we place all before you now in joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels. And with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord God, Almighty Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Jim, can you, can you see it there? Remember, okay. remember, Lord, your church. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Martin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Susan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus taught us that we are God's children, nothing less. We stand and we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord and the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
there when I needed you since I don't know when. You were more than a mother, you were my best friend. And although God is taking you in your night, here tonight, I'll have the thoughts of you and daddy walking side by side. Cause I'll miss you most when the door is closed and there ain't no light in sight. As brothers and sisters, we got each other and everything will be alright. Look at the sky late at night, I'll see you shining there. With your short curled hair and bright blue eyes, can't be seen from anywhere. And there's not a mountain that I would not climb to bring you back to the light. To tell you that I love you. I'll miss you most when the door is closed and there ain't no light in sight. As brothers and sisters, we got each other and everything will be alright. Thank you, thank you all for the prayerful way in which we've been able to sing and, and pray. Thanks to Father Jim over here and Father John behind me. Please now, if you will, stand for a final prayer. And Father, we thank and praise you for this day. Thank you for Susie, she who she who was poor in spirit, gentle, humble in heart. She who hungered and thirsted for what was right. Who worked hard, loved her home and family, and gave to you every day the worship that you deserve through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. I'll ask Father Jim now to bless the coffin in memory of Susan's baptism and we say our response, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Let us pray to your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Susie, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Susie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. 
Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith. Until we all meet in Christ, we are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In peace now, let us take Susie to her place of final rest.
Uh, 